Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Ripperda. I'm a family practice physician who works in Murfreesboro, Illinois for Shawnee Healthcare. Now to really understand what I'm gonna talk about in this video, you need to watch a different video that I've made previously where I talk about what happens in a person's body when they become addicted to opiates. So if you're starting with this video, stop, quit, knock it off, go back and watch the first video and then come back or a lot of this won't make sense to you necessarily. Buprenorphine, that's a complicated word and I might not say it a whole lot throughout the course of this video. You may have heard of buprenorphine. It's a drug and it comes in a couple of different brand names. There's a form called Subutex, there's a form called Suboxone, there's a form called Sublocade. There are a few other forms as well, but those are probably the three best known. Now, we doctors frequently use Suboxone, Subutex, buprenorphine, Sublocade interchangeably, but that's technically wrong. Those are all a little bit different, and I'll explain why a little bit later in the video. But just know that I'm human and I might screw that up, meaning I might say Subutex when I mean buprenorphine, Suboxone when I mean buprenorphine, Sublocade when I mean buprenorphine. So stick with me, be patient, thanks. So what is buprenorphine? Buprenorphine is, first and foremost, an opiate. Now again, if you don't know what that is, harken back to the first video, but as a refresher, an opiate is anything that turns on new receptors inside the human body that was put there by a man. In other words, it's a substance that you have ingested in one way or another that you've gotten into your body and it turns on mu receptors. And as a reminder, mu receptors are those things that sit on nerve cells that when they're turned on, they turn nerve signals down and they release dopamine in the brain. Buprenorphine is special in a few different ways though. So if we talk about other opiates, again, some examples, hydrocodone, oxycodone, morphine, heroin, fentanyl, none of those last too terribly long in the body. There are some forms of morphine that might last up to 24 hours in the body. There are some forms of oxycontin or oxycodone that might last about 12 hours in the body. But by and large, most opiates last about six to eight hours in the body. Fentanyl only lasts a couple of hours. Heroin only lasts about four hours. Buprenorphine is different in one major way. It lasts about five days in the body. I'll repeat that because a lot of people don't believe it. Buprenorphine lasts about five days in the body and in a couple of specialized formulations, even longer than that. So if someone was to take a dose of buprenorphine, that drug is gonna remain in their system for a minimum of five days, and in some cases, longer. Another big difference, buprenorphine is not as strong as those other opiates. It only turns on mu receptors about 40% of what heroin does, which means it does turn nerve signals down, it does cause the brain to release dopamine, but it just doesn't do it nearly as strongly as the other opiates do. And maybe the most important difference in buprenorphine, it sticks to mu receptors better than anything else that has ever been discovered. Let me say that again. Buprenorphine sticks to mu receptors better than anything else that's ever been discovered. Why is that important? Because the way opiates work is by turning on mu receptors, but we've only got so many mu receptors in our body. So what that means is if a person were to shoot up heroin, let's say, and then take buprenorphine immediately following that, what's gonna happen is the buprenorphine is actually gonna kick the heroin off the mu receptors, make the heroin basically inactive, and the buprenorphine will take the heroin's place on the mu receptors. That's true for oxycodone, that's true for hydrocodone, that's true for morphine, that's true for fentanyl, that's true for all opiates. Buprenorphine will stick to those mu receptors better. If somebody takes the buprenorphine first and then wants to take hydrocodone or oxycodone, the hydrocodone or oxycodone can't really do anything because again, the buprenorphine is gonna be taking up all the space on the mu receptors and the hydrocodone and oxycodone just can't get to where it needs to get in the body to become active. So what does that mean? Well, buprenorphine, as I think you can say about all good chemicals, was developed in a German lab in the early 1970s. All good science stories start in a German lab in the 1970s, I think. But buprenorphine was supposed to be a replacement for morphine. It was gonna be given in hospitals to treat pain in people who had come into the hospital with painful conditions. Turns out, not a great drug for the treatment of acute pain. Because it's so long acting, it takes a little while for buprenorphine to build up in the body, somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five days. So if you show up to the emergency room and you have a broken leg and would like your pain relieved, you know, now, buprenorphine's not a good choice because you have to be on it for several days. So it wasn't used very much for anything between the time of its discovery, some initial studies, and roughly the year 2000. Some enterprising scientists in the late 1990s figured out that if you give buprenorphine to people who are addicted to heroin, 
those people don't have nearly as much of a desire to use heroin. Here's why. If you remember from the first video, I keep hearkening back to that, I know, but if you go back to the first video and understand what happens in the body with opiate addiction, eventually the body has to have something on those mu receptors turning it on. Or the body won't make natural painkillers and won't make dopamine to help a person feel not pain and to feel some joy in life. So buprenorphine will stick on those mu receptors and it will keep them turned on just a little bit, not totally fired up like heroin does, not totally fired up like morphine does, but turned on a little bit and nice and steady. Remember, I said that heroin only lasts four hours in the body. That means if somebody is addicted to heroin, they're gonna have to take heroin every few hours in order to keep that level kind of steady and not go through withdrawal. On buprenorphine, you really only have to take the dose once a day or maybe even less than that in order to maintain a steady level in their body. A lot of people who struggle with addiction will tell you they don't feel normal while they're addicted to something. And that's because again, their nerves are basically going haywire all the time because those mu receptors are being turned on, turned off, and there's never a decent level. They're either full of drugs and the mu receptors are totally fired up and going haywire or the mu receptors are empty and the person's experiencing withdrawal. With buprenorphine, the mu receptors again get a nice steady level that comes close to what the levels are like in somebody who is not addicted to anything, to a more what we call physiologic or normal level. So because buprenorphine does that, it works. Now, how good is it? It's not perfect. If somebody comes into a drug treatment program saying, I'm addicted to opiates, I'd like to get off these, what can you do to help me? And a person is prescribed buprenorphine, well, not everybody's going to succeed in conquering their addiction. Roughly one third of people really won't do well. So they either won't take the medication the way they're supposed to, they won't have the exact effects of it, or it just won't work for them in some way or another. That's the bad news. Here's the good news. Two thirds of people's lives will get better taking this medication. Out of those two thirds, roughly half will get generally clean and free of addiction pretty shortly after starting the medication. The other half of those people will make their lives much better, might still struggle with addiction a little bit, but again, their lives are gonna be a whole lot better than they were prior um, to being on the buprenorphine. So again, is the success rate 100%? No, it's not perfect, but it's the best thing that we have right now. And again, about one out of three people who come in addicted to opiates and start taking buprenorphine will get clean from day one. Another third, their lives will be better, but they might still struggle a little bit, and another third won't necessarily do perfectly. Buprenorphine does come in several different forms that I discussed a little bit earlier in the video. The three most common ones that you may have heard of or that you may encounter are Subutex. Subutex is a pill. It's nothing but buprenorphine. It is the only ingredient inside the pill, and it's placed under the tongue and dissolved for a person to get it into their body. Now, it's not that we have anything against somebody swallowing pills, it's just that scientists have not yet figured out how to get buprenorphine into a person's body through a pill that they can swallow. So if you were to take a Subutex pill and swallow it, it's not gonna do anything harmful to you, it's just that the pill won't work. Digestive juices in the stomach are gonna chew up the medication. So, most people on Subutex have to take one or two pills a day, put it under their tongue, and let it melt and the body absorbs it through the little pink stuff inside your mouth, through your tongue, through what's called the buccal mucosa, and it gets into the bloodstream that way. The originally best known form of buprenorphine was Suboxone. Suboxone comes in a film in a little foil packet. One film of Suboxone is basically the same thing as one tablet of Subutex or plain buprenorphine. The film is taken out of the foil packet and it gets placed underneath the tongue where it also dissolves and is absorbed into the body that way. The chemical difference between Suboxone and Subutex is that Suboxone also has something called Naloxone in it. Narcan, or Naloxone, works by turning off those mu receptors that I keep talking about entirely. It shuts them down. Now, if you're paying attention to the science here, you might say, hold on, if you turn off the mu receptors, isn't a person gonna go into withdrawal? Yeah, they would. Except if you take the Suboxone like you're supposed to, meaning place it under the tongue, the body doesn't actually absorb any of the naloxone that way, so there's no threat of withdrawal. When Suboxone was initially being marketed, it was thought that 
there was some potential that people could possibly abuse it because it is an opiate. So the naloxone was put in there to try to keep people from shooting it up or snorting it, thinking that the drug could possibly be um, abused in that way. Now, really nobody who has a problem with opiate addiction is seeking out buprenorphine for abuse because it doesn't turn on those mu receptors as strong as other opiates, as I've mentioned several times throughout the course of this video. Now, buprenorphine does have some street value though, and that's because it can be used to stave off withdrawal for several days. So again, the naloxone inside the suboxone was initially thought that it would deter people from abusing it, but in reality, that's actually not too much of a concern. As a side note, it turns out that the naloxone doesn't actually stop buprenorphine from working anyway. So putting naloxone with buprenorphine was one of those things that kind of seemed like a good idea at the start, but in practice, it really doesn't do very much. So in the end, suboxone versus subutex versus plain buprenorphine are all roughly the same thing. Buprenorphine, uh, the generic form, subutex, and suboxone all come in a couple of different dosage forms, but the most common one that's given is an eight milligram dosage of buprenorphine. And for an average person who's struggling with opiate addiction, they're gonna need somewhere between one and three dosages per day. Now again, I say per day because, let me remind you, once again, buprenorphine lasts about five days in the body. So this is not something that a person is gonna to have to take repeatedly throughout the course of the day. A lot of people that struggle with opiate addiction get used to taking pills or to injecting something various times throughout the day because those substances don't last very long in the body. But again, because buprenorphine lasts so long, you only have to take it once a day. Now the eight milligram dosage that I was talking about fills up about 75% of the mu receptors inside a person's body. And there's a ceiling effect around 24 milligrams. Now ceiling effect basically means taking any more than about three dosages per day doesn't necessarily do a whole lot extra in somebody's body because there's only so many mu receptors. There's only so many places for the drug to be active. Think of dumping in water into a bucket that's already full. You're not gonna fill up the bucket anymore. That's kind of the same thing with mu receptors and buprenorphine at a dose of about 24 milligrams. So again, just to be clear on that once more, buprenorphine comes in suboxone, subutex, and just plain generic buprenorphine. They're all roughly equivalent in terms of what they do in the body. There is a newer form of buprenorphine called Sublocade. Sublocade is the brand name. Now, Sublocade is just buprenorphine, but it's administered in a totally different way than the film or than the tab that has to melt under the tongue. Sublocade is a once a month injection. Now, this has been formulated such that what happens is somebody who wants to get Sublocade will get an injection once a month. It goes underneath the skin in the stomach and it creates a tiny little ball of the medication there that then slowly releases into the person's bloodstream over the course of a month. Nice part about this, you don't have to think about taking a pill or a film every day. One of the biggest complaints with the pills and the films, they don't taste very good, right? No offense to the manufacturers, it kind of tastes like they were trying to create Gatorade but screwed something up. That being said, the taste sure beats having to deal with addiction day to day. So the sublocade has to be administered once a month in a doctor's office. And again, we don't know exactly how long the sublocade lasts. It's a little bit different from person to person, but it lasts at least a month, and in some people as long as six months. So as long as someone on sublocade gets that injection at least once a month, they should feel fine. And again, the benefits to sublocade are not having to take a pill or a film every day. So we remove that from consideration in terms of treating somebody's addiction. One of the most common questions I get from people when they come to see me in the office the first time is how long am I gonna have to be on this medication? How long am I gonna be, have to be on the buprenorphine? There's no right answer to that. So the current thought in treatment of addiction is that there is not necessarily an end in sight to when somebody stops taking the medication. Again, if you watch the first video that I made talking about addiction physiology and what happens in somebody's brain when they become addicted to an opiate, there's some permanent changes that happen inside the brain from opiate addiction. Now those changes are reversible in some people, but unfortunately not reversible in others. So when somebody comes into an opiate treatment program saying that, yeah, I would like to take buprenorphine to try to get free of opiate addiction, there's no guarantee that that person's gonna be able to come off the medication anytime soon, necessarily. The numbers say this, if you take 100 people on a treatment program taking buprenorphine and they feel good, over the course of about four years, roughly half of those people can wean off the medication, stay clear of their opiate addiction and continue to do well, but the other half of people can't. 
It is an individualized process, which means there's no stark plan, or there shouldn't be any stark plan to get a person off the medication. It has to be guided by the individual person, how they're doing with the medication, what's happening in their life, how they feel, and what their provider wishes. So I don't think anybody should get involved in any kind of treatment plan where they have a firm idea of exactly when they can get off the medication. And again, in some people, it can be hard, if not impossible, to get off the medication because once again, all those negative feelings from addiction can come rushing back if they get off the med, unfortunately. Regarding long-term treatment, I have patients in my own program who have been on the program doing perfectly well for in the neighborhood of eight years as of the day that I'm making this video, and they feel fine. They come in once every three months, they get a prescription for their medication, and they do well. I don't feel that it's absolutely imperative to get anybody off the medication just because there's some arbitrary period of time that they've been on it. So here's what I'm saying to my patients. I'll be here as long as you wanna be on the medication, and it is just fine with me if you never wanna come off of the stuff, it's okay. I should mention also that buprenorphine is not the only option in terms of medications to help somebody overcome opiate addiction. There are a couple of other options, including methadone and Vivitrol. Now, buprenorphine has the highest success rate at treating opiate addiction, but methadone and Vivitrol do work for some people. And I have to say that at Shawnee Healthcare, we don't have provisions to treat with methadone or with Vivitrol. But if you're out there and you feel like those might be an option for you, if you get a hold of us, we will happily help you find somebody who is willing to provide those resources, and they do exist here in Southern Illinois where I live, work, and practice.